Hello there, Gemini. Let's get a weekly reading for you. General messages. Find out what to keep in mind. If there's something specific that I've that I'm getting from the cards, I will say only certain Geminis need to know this. Otherwise, it's just like general messages. What you need to keep in mind as we're going forward. Okay. Love the love the new space. Probably not. It's pretty plain and boring. However, I love it because it's uninterrupted. And so you're going to get some good messages. Uh, those of you who have been following me for a little while know that I've had some trials and tribulations in the quest to find a quiet place. And so I'm, I'm in the back of my lovely Charlie Bird, my, my old 1997 F-150 pickup. He just got fixed. I just got him back over the weekend. And so... Here I am, hanging out with them at a park where I can be left in peace, uninterrupted. We got the Ten of Swords that wants that wants to come out and talk to you a little bit about feeling a little bit, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed this week with the idea that nothing, like nothing good, ever comes to you. <laughs> at, at that um, when whenever I try to do something nice for other people. They betray me. It could be that some of you, specifically some of you, have um, some Cancerian placements in addition to your sun sign or something like that. Or you're, you're Cancer and you're looking into Gemini a little bit because of some of your other side placements. Um, cross watchers, keep that in mind as well. Because, I mean, generally I feel like Gemini, even though this is a sword, this is a sword card and uh, air signs like Gemini are represented by swords. It's not like a, an energy that, that Gemini usually carries for very long. When they do have like the, the self-pity kind of energy, it's just like it's it lasts like maybe an evening and then it and then it goes away. But this is like it's enough of a vibration to um, it's enough of a vibration for the cards to want to talk about it. And we we really want to keep in mind how well, I mean, okay, I, recently I, 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 I tuned into a discussion about how um, the online community, the online law of attraction community shames people that are in a, a difficult, challenging situation as though they brought it on themselves, right? So I'm not trying to say you brought any kind of betrayal on yourself because the other person... When you do something for someone and they behave in a, in a way that's just, I mean, not, it's just, it isn't okay, right? Uh, immoral or, you know, chicken shit or whatever it is, like, un, you know, it's just not okay. Whatever it is that they did. Um, like, uh, you're, you're a participant, but you are not the only person that is, is, creating that reality so two of you together are creating this reality it's like you're in a pact together you're allowing yourself to be stabbed <laughs> and how many relationships have I been in and I, I'm sorry to say I've been in relationships with partners in my life where they tr actually tried to physically hit me and I'm like, whoa, when I get the hell out of the way and I leave that, I leave that freaking place, right? Like, I'm not, I've never been in a physical fight with anyone because I don't give them a chance to hit me. Now, there are some people who can't just leave situations. Like, I'm going, I'm going off the rails here. Anyway, there, there are some of you who can't, who just can't leave an abusive situation, and I'm not talking about that. But there are resources for you who are out there in, in an abusive um, situation where, like, you don't feel like you can easily just walk away. But there are like domestic abuse kinds of resources out there. Please do that for yourself. But as for as for those of you who are in connections where it's just like an emotional abuse. <laughs> Where you're emotionally feeling like you're big. It's like, why does this always happen to me? Honestly, it's because you are a participant in it. You're allowing yourself to be to be injured in this way. How about you change your perspective to, I don't associate with people that would treat me that way. Just like that. I don't associate with people who treat me that way. It can be that simple. It takes time to rebuild your 
relationship network because I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about family. It'll take a while to recreate a relationship network that isn't abusive, but it's worth it. It's worth being like creating a vacuum in which you ab attract people that will will treat you as well as you treat them. It's worth it. What else have we got here for Gemini this week? Change gears, huh? There you are. Page of Swords. You being in your element. It is your it, it is your birthday week when I'm posting this. It is your birthday week, and it's also in the shadow of Mercury retrograde, which is, as a Virgo, I'm ruled by Mercury as well, and so the shadow of Mercury, Mercury retrograde hits me a lot harder than the main part of Mercury uh, retrograde in that uh, the feels, the, the, the transition, the feels and the transition are much more profound. So my logic kind of goes out the door during Mercury retrograde. And that first transition is really challenging because all this, all this emotion floods in for me when, when, it, when it comes in. And so like, I can, I can kind of feel like, I feel like one of the reasons, like, it, like there's a pivot in these two cards together. There's a pivot between self-pity and aggression between like, like that, that thing that happens when something bad happens to you, where you're like feeling sorry for yourself, and then you're like, no, this is bullshit, I'm gonna fight it, right? So this is this is the, the transition right there. And that's good because anger is a step up from from self-pity. It's a positive, it's a positive step up from self-pity. It's still not the best feeling to have, but I don't think you're recognizing it as your own personal hurt feelings. You're, you're seeing it as that person is bad. And it's really important this week so that you create as little damage as possible. The, the Page of Swords can, can, can inflict a lot of trouble in his aggression. He's like, he's going to set things straight. He's going to make things right. And he can cause a lot of damage in that, in that space. So if, to, to cause as little damage as possible, because you don't want to carry that karma around with you, I suggest that you feel what you feel and recognize and put a pin in exactly what it is that you're feeling instead of acting out in anger or uh, um, retribution, um, vengeance, right? It's not necessary to act out, you know, an eye for an eye. That's not necessary. That's, that's the old paradigm. We don't need to be that way. Instead, we just pivot and ignore, right? There's so many, so many cultures that have this uh, tradition that instead of punishing, these these are old, these are not Judeo-Christian cultures, okay? But and that includes the Muslim, but um, cultures that instead of punishing someone that's done something wrong, they just ignore them as if they don't exist, and that's the worst punishment you could give somebody. But it has as little, it has much less karmic weight. Ign to ignore someone has much less karmic weight than to punish someone. So keep that in mind. If you're really feeling hurt, nurture yourself. Hold yourself as though you are a child. Hold those feelings. Like what would you say to your child if they came home from school and were like, my friend said a whole bunch of mean things to me. Treat yourself like that. You would hold them and say, no, it's not true. You don't need friends like that. You know, instead of being like, they, they piss me off. I'm going to do something about it. You don't need to do that. And you definitely don't, don't take it to heart because it's not you. It's not about you at all. It's about them. Your only, your only place in that is your, com your compl the only way that you're complicit in it is if you continue participating in it. You don't want to do that anymore. Let's bring it all together with a little blessing for the week ahead, for helping ourselves through these feelings that we have that can turn from feeling sorry for ourselves to feeling angry to feeling resentful toward the people that we're trying to take care of, that we're trying to have, like, enjoy life with, right? So let's get a blessing and come down into our bodies. 
deep breath in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just got my vac my second vaccination a couple days ago, and so I have some shortness of breath. Hmm. So bear with me here. Inhaling love. Mm, exhaling anxiety, fear, worry, regret, anger. It's going out. Inhaling the love of the universe. Pushing it down to our root where our bottom touches the surface that we're sitting on. If we're standing, then we just push it out, down, down, down to the ground. Inhaling love, exhaling fear and worry. Now let's do a little affirmation that I am safe, I am loved, I am lovable, I feel good, I feel positive, I feel loved. I feel loved, I feel cared for, I feel safe. Inhale love, exhale worry, loneliness out, gone. Peace is what we're inhaling. Mm. And relaxing. Now when we use the affirmation of what we want to feel instead of thinking at all about what somebody else did, we are resetting our vibration to accept the positive things that we desire from here, from the present into the future. And we are releasing the things that bothered us from the past. We're allowing it to just disappear because our higher selves our connection to the universe, to source, to God, is much greater than any harm that could be inflicted on us in our worldly bodies. Gemini, thank you so much for being with me today. I love you, and I will see you again soon. <laughs>